Our little book of the classical phenomena, the classical phenomena is basically divided into two parts. First theory is the relations, and the second one is the Bin's relations or Bin's displacement formula. What relations formula says that the the black body reductions and energy density is proportional to the mu square. So according to this, as we increase the frequency, the energy density of reductions increases. Whereas when says the energy density is proportional to T raised to power minus lambda by kT. So according to this, or you can write it as minus a into t. According to this, the energy density decreases as we increase the frequency plus. This may written as c by nu. So the, these two explain the behavior of the black body radiations, and according to these two, we say. According to this, it must increase as we increase the frequency, whereas this says as we increase the frequency, it must decrease. And when we plot the law of energy density, remember, Bill's displacement formula is also written in another form that the lambda is proportional to 1 by t. Now, what is the meaning of lambda and t? t is the temperature of the black body reactions, and lambda is the position where we get the maximum energy density, and it is Inversely proportional temperature. As we increase the temperature, the wavelength or the maximum wavelength decreases, and this, this is known as Wien's displacement law. Where B is the constant. Now, when we talk about the second part, if we plot the curves for the black body radiations or the energy density of black body radiations, so this is zero, mu, mu, and this is the mu. So, according to relativity. Is proportional to mu square, <coughs> and the second one is the Wien's displacement law. According to it, it must decrease as we increase the frequency. Now, this is the behavior which is creating the problem with the classical mechanics. As per Rayleigh's formula, the energy density must tends to infinite. As mu tends to infinite, we say mu nu tends to infinite. Whereas Wynn says, as mu tends to infinite, energy density must tend to zero. Now, these are the contradictory results which are not explained by the classical phenomena. Then, the result which is obtained experimentally, remember, whenever we talk about the scientific community, they consider experimental results or they give the preference experimental results or the theoretical results. So, in this case, till here, it proportional to mu square or proportional to mu and after that it decreases continuously. So by looking this diagram we can say for some frequencies or for some range of frequencies the relative formula is applicable whereas for the other half of the frequencies we say the range formula is applicable. Now how to explain the behavior of material can we say there are four distance we use this one again which is not possible. So, the behavior of energy density which is not explained by the classical mechanics are explained by the quantum mechanical approach given by the Max Planck and he has used the complete phenomena with the hypothesis. Before we talk about that, as relative formula, mu tends to infinite, mu tends to zero, whereas the experimental result shows as mu tends to infinite, mu nu tends to zero. This discrepancy in the behavior of black body radiations, which is not explained by the relations, is known as <coughs> sorry, is known as ultraviolet catastrophe. This is the first one where we talk about the waste displacement law. If you look over here, as we increase the temperature, uh, the shift of the maximum intensity towards the lower wavelength, and that is what we have as a end of question to one over t. This is the Wins radiation formula, no need to worry about this one, simply so on this one that E raised to power minus C by lambda T. C is the constant, T is the temperature. As we increase the lambda, all you can write in reverse order, that this gives the value which is inversely proportional. And the next one is the relative formula. The complete formula is written over here as 8 pi mu square kT upon C cube into D nu. That is, we have just only this part. Mu square. Now, this is the ultraviolet catastrophe. 
When you talk about the behavior of material, this is in terms of the length, and here it is the intensity, whereas I have written as the energy density and wavelength. The Planck's quantum, uh, quantum theory or quantum hypothesis. Now, this is the most important one where we need to explain the complete hypothesis how quantum Planck's quantum theory explains the behavior of material or how we try to overcome the underlying catastrophe. The first one is assume that the atom in the ball of black body behave like harmonic oscillator. So, you assume each and every atom is the single atom and it behaves as a harmonic oscillator whose energy is written as nhq where n is the quantum number and h is the Planck's constant and u is the frequency. As long as the oscillator is one of the allowed state cannot emit or absorb energy. It is very much related to Bohr's orbit that when electrons are from K to L or L to L, L to K shell then only it either emit or absorb the energy radiations. So same way here we are assuming that the atom uh, behaving as a simple harmonic oscillator and it absorb or emit radiations only in case of jump from one energy state to another. The formula given by the Planck is unit d nu is equal to 8 pi h upon c cube into d nu d nu upon e raised to power h by kt minus 1. This is the formula which completely explain the behavior of light body radiations and here if you want you can calculate both the lower frequency range as well high frequency range which gives absolutely similar formula to the light body radiations formula given by the legends and the Evans formula. If you take over here, e raised to power h to by kt minus 1, you can expand this term as for the lower frequencies it is written as e raised to power h nu by kt minus 1 is 1 plus h nu by kt minus 1 just simple binomial expansion this minus plus 1 so we we'll get u nu t nu is equal to a pi h nu cube d nu upon c cube into h nu by kt h cancel nu cancel nu square and it goes in your data Absolutely same formula 8 by s minus 8 by n square kt equals to the equation. Similarly, you can add, find out the behavior of the radiations at lower frequencies, and this is what the Planck's radiation formula. And in this case, there is no more ultraviolet catastrophe. Similarly, you can understand the another uh, uh, classical phenomena which is known as a photoelectric effect. In case of photoelectric effect, we just learn the definition that when an electromagnetic radiation of sufficiently high frequency, such as ultraviolet light or X-rays, incident on a thin surface, electrons are emitted. And this is what the photoelectric effect. This is the best way to understand. This is the plane surface of the matter. When the ultraviolet or X-rays hitting on the surface, then the electrons are emitted. And if these emitted electrons reach to another end of the circuit or cell, another end of anode, then there must be some current in the circuit, and that current is known as photoelectric effect. The similar problem is like mass and black body radiations, which originated from the photoelectric effect, which are not explained by the classical phenomena, then using one most important relation of Einstein, E is equal to H nu. And assuming that every atom is behaving like a simple harmonic oscillator, we can explain the behavior of the photoelectric effect and photoelectric current. Now, what are the assumptions in case of photoelectric effect? According to Einstein's quantum theory of light, he assumed the first one, which is very easy to understand that EM wave energy is concentrated in photons and spread out. There should be no delay in the emission of photoelectrons. Okay. This is the important one that the energy which is incident on the surface is in the form of photon. Before the origin of quantum mechanics or before Einstein's theory, nobody talked about the photons. But after this, we assume that the photon is a quantum of energy or the packets of energy which is striking on the surface. And there is no delay in emission of the electrons as the radiation hit to the surface the emission of electrons started. The second one, all photons of frequency have the same energy. Changing the intensity of monochromatic light 
we will change the number of photons but not their energy. Now, this is another one which is not explained by the classical mechanics that the, all the photons have the same frequency means <coughs> energy H new or frequency new have the same energy. So changing the intensity of monochromatic light beam will change the number of photons but not their energies. This is another fundamental which is used to explain the photoelectric effect. These are the things which are explained by the Einstein's photoelectric theory, the important thing. There must be minimum energy for an electron escape from a particular metal surface. This energy is called work function of the metal. When I talk about the work function of the metal, means the minimum energy required to start the ejection of electron from the surface of metal is known as either work function or pressure energy, and it is given as y is equal to h nu. When we talk about the incident energy of incident radiations, it is very simple to write the complete equation of photoelectric effect. Let's say H nu is the energy of incident photon. Now, out of this H nu incident energy, phi naught energy is used as the threshold energy, the energy required to start the ejection of the electron, and the remaining energy is transferred to the electron. So that is known as kinetic energy of electron. And the complete energy of the electron is given as h nu minus phi naught, or we can write as h nu minus h nu naught. So this is h nu minus nu naught. This is the kinetic energy of the electron received through the escaping of the same electron from the metal surface. <coughs> The photoelectric effect is a phenomenon of visible ultraviolet region which varies from 1.7 to 3.3 electron volt or about 4.0 to 7.5 electron volt, 7.5 into 10 to 14 hertz. Now, the last one from here, the, what is the meaning of photon? As I said, photon is like an electromagnetic wave photon with the moving with the speed of light. Photon, what is a photon? Photon, we can describe photon with the following properties like an electromagnetic and photon will be the speed of light. So, we initially found that the C is 1 upon root of mu naught, absolutely not. Where mu naught is permeability and absolutely not is the permeability. Finally, that also we found that the electromagnetic waves are moving the speed of light. Similarly, the photon is also moving the speed of light. They have zero rest mass and rest mass energy is also zero. They can energy and momentum. Their energy is given by A is, A is equal to H nu, whereas momentum is given by H by C or H by theta. Uh, the H by lambda term will derive in the next session. And they can be created or destroyed by radiations is emitted and absorbed. And the last one is the they can have particle and collision with other particles such as electron. And this phenomenon we can discuss in the part of the Compton effect. Now what is the Compton effect? Here we will just talk about the fundamental of the Compton effect. When a photon of energy H nu hit on an electron at rest, the energy of electron is or the energy, rest mass energy of the electron is second is and not c square and its momentum is zero. When a photon of energy h nu and momentum h nu by c hit on this electron, some amount of this photon is transferred to the electron and in result the photon loses its energy and electron receives some energy whose energies or the new energies m c square or here it is m not c square and after getting some energy from the photon its momentum is written as m into v whereas the energy of photon is written as h nu dash and its momentum is h nu dash by c this is the basic diagram of the Compton effect now when we talk about the Compton scattering now how to explain the Compton effect in last topic of the photon, we talk about the interaction of the photon with the particle like materials like electron. So, what will happen to the, this photon when it takes to the electron? The classical phenomenon says there is no change in the frequency or wavelength of the particle. 
Whereas in case of the Dominant effect, it is very easy to explain the behavior of the change in the wavelength or frequency of photon by collision with the electron. Now, how to do the calculations for this? It's very easy to talk about the change in preservation of the energy as well as preservation of momentum. When we say it's an elastic collision, it means its kinetic energy is conserved and the initial momentum is equal to final momentum. By using some initial conditions, we can obtain the final expression is lambda dash minus lambda is equal to lambda c 1 minus cos phi. Here, there is some correction in this diagram. If I write this one is as theta and this one is phi, then this is 1 minus cos theta. Lambda day is the wavelength of the scattered photon, whereas the lambda is the wavelength of incident photon. Lambda c is known as constant wavelength. Remember, this is not the Compton shape, it is the Compton wavelength, which is constant, and its value is lambda c is written as h upon m not c or 0 0.0254 angstrom. Now, <coughs> lambda dash minus lambda, which is the difference of wavelength, which is written as del lambda. And this del lambda is known as Compton shift. Now, when we look on this diagram, at theta is equal to zero, one minus one is zero. If there is no change in the path of photon, then the Compton shift of photon is zero. It shows there is no change in the wavelength of the photon while hitting the electron and going in the same direction. If theta is ninety degree, then del lambda comes to point zero equal to lambda c or 0.0254 and so on. In case of theta is equal to 180 degree, where theta is equal to 180 degree, del lambda is equal to 2 lambda c or 0 0.0484 and so on. Now, when we look on the values of the Compton shift for the different cases, I am not interested in the value of lambda or lambda dash. But the maximum shift observed in the Compton effect is the 0 0.0484 angstrom, which is much smaller than 1 angstrom. So, Compton effect is not possible to observe in the visible spectrum where the wavelength of visible light is approximately 4000 to 7000 angstrom. Whereas in case of electron scattering or interaction of the photon with the electron will give the Compton effect. And this Compton effect gives idea about how the photon interact with the electron and in result the change in the wavelength observed. This is the derivation. Just we'll take a look of this. The fundamental that the E kinetic initial E final E plus and not C square is equal to E dash, e dash plus E electron or you can write it as a H nu plus and not C square is equal to H nu dash plus M C square. Where is momentum as a vector quantity, so you can write it in the X as well by direction. For X direction, this can be written as H nu by C plus 0 is equal to H nu dash by C cos theta plus M B cos phi. Just take a look from the last diagram. In the second case, for y direction, the equation may be written as 0 plus 0 is equal to h nu dash by c sin theta minus m b sin phi. And when we solve these three equations, we get the final expression of lambda dash minus lambda is equal to h by m not c into 1 minus cos theta. The final expression. Now, the greatest wavelength change during the Compton effect when photon is scattered at an angle of 180 degree is twice of lambda c and it comes as 0 0.04 angstrom only. In this case, the wavelength change will be the twice of the Compton wavelength. Other equation was derived by Compton and the phenomena is the observed from first time is known as Compton effect. Strong evidence in support of the quantum theory of radiations. Here, we use the energy expression as h nu. Earlier, everywhere we used the expression for energy as half mv square. And that concept of half m square is changed by the Einstein itself only, and he tried to explain the existence of quantum theory of radiations. Same explanation is observed in case of black body radiations as well. 
in case of photoelectric effects. The change in wavelength in the compound effect is independent of wavelength of incident radiations or incident for the lambda is equal to lambda c which is constant. So it's all about the change or the deviation of scattered photon gives the value of the scattered photon or say compound shift only. These are the diagrams. This is the experimental set of the compound effect. Here we use the source of monochromatic X-rays. Remember we are talking about something which is in the range of 1 angstrom or less than 1 angstrom and in that case only it is possible to observe the compound effect. This is the polymetry to give the streamline flow of the X-rays. Here we are using a target, maybe an electron, maybe an atom where electrons are present in the outermost shell and this is the screen or it is the detector or a spectrometer which detect the scattered photon or scattered X-rays and this is the reason where an scattered rays goes. So by measuring this data, we can identify, we can find out the compound shift. After looking on the properties explained by the Planck and Einstein's theory for the electron as well the electromagnetic waves and then the compound effect gives some idea about the change in the frequency or the wavelength due to scattering from an electron. The new theory given by the D. Broglie in 1905, <coughs> sorry, the 1905 particle properties of were discovered which we discussed in the last part and in 1924 Louis D. Broglie proposed that moving object means those particles which arise in the range of atomic or molecular level are having dual nature hence they have the particle as well wave nature whereas the waves also have the particle nature the existence of the probably waves are experimentally demonstrated in 1927 by the division in general remember the case they are able to explain the nature of waves as well the experimental demonstration for the Traditions. So, how the problem started is that the energy is written as H nu by Einstein's equation, whereas the same way Einstein also tried to correlate the energy and mass with the formula mc square. If we rewrite these two equations and just try to understand H nu by H nu is nu is equal to C by lambda and this is mc square. H by lambda is equal to m into c. m is the mass, c is the velocity of light. So the mass into the velocity of light is going to be down. Now this is the expression which gives some idea about the origin of dual nature hypothesis given by the D problem. So, the D Broglie waves are represented by this formula lambda is equal to h by p. Now, p is the momentum which is always described for the moving particles. For the a particle whose mass is m and velocity is b over c is represented by p and lambda is the wavelength. So, lambda represents the wave nature of a particle or wave nature and p represents a particle nature. Now, suppose I have some equation where one side says it is the well, the wave another one is the particle then it looks like something which may be possible to describe using this formula and D. Broglie has done the same thing that he said those particles which are in the range of very small when say atomic or molecular level or whose mass is very high may have some wavelength remember wavelength is also possible for even if I am moving with a very high speed or any particle say 1 kg, 2 kg but the wavelength comes is very high. I'll just take a small example. Suppose I talk about a particle whose mass is say 100 kg and it is moving at the very high speed, high means it is 100 meter per second. If I convert it into kilometer per hour, then it is 
100 into 18 by 5, which gives around 360 kilometers per hour. So I am assuming very high speed. Now if I solve it for a particle whose mass is 100 or say 1 kg only, in that case I will get by length as 6.6 into 10 power minus 32 meters. Now, the world is looking for the nano technology. Everybody wants to work in the field of nano, where we talk about the size of 10 to the power minus 9 meters. Even in case of 10 to the power minus 9 meters, we need a lot of technologies, a lot of characterization techniques to confirm the size of particle in this problem. Now, even by using number of technologies, we can only observe 10 to the power minus 9, then how can we? observe or take a look of transfer minus 32 meter size small problem. So in case of macro world we never talk about the real nature of particle or real nature of meter but in the micro world at atomic or molecular level we have to explain we need to understand the dual nature and the leap of the hypothesis AMA indicate there must be something which gives idea about the dual behavior of matter. Now uh, here are the formula lambda is equal to h by p or h by mv if ma momentum is very high then the wavelength is very low or vice versa low momentum means it gives a very high wavelength and that is the case of electron suppose I remove this 1 kg with the mass of electron which is approximately 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 and electrons are moving with the speed of light we are talking about the photons also so we just assume they are moving with the speed of light or close to speed of light 3 into 10 power 8 If I solve it I will get lambda is equal to 6.6 upon 9 which are 27 27.3 into 10 to the power minus 31 plus 8 minus plus 31 so it is 31 minus 8 is minus 23 minus 23 goes in your letter so I get minus 11 so I get the problem ok and this is less than 6 goes out by 4 approximately 2 into 10 is power minus 10 in this one it does or approximately 1 by 4 2 point 5 2 and this one now, this is very much in the region of observable condition or close to the wavelength of X rays. And this is the origin, this is the idea which suggests that there may be existence of real nature of the matter. Now, the question comes if particle exists in the form of dual nature, means like a particle exists in the wave form, whereas waves exist in the particle form, then how? We can explain the behavior of these waves, what quantity varies in the waves, and what kind of these waves, like sine wave, cosine wave, electromagnetic wave, or matter wave, or sound wave. This is the question which comes in mind of the reason because that we agree to say that yes, they exist in the dual nature, but how and what type of nature of these matter waves are. Now, before we talk about the uh, matter existence of matter waves and how we can explain, we talk about the quantum mechanical wave function. In case of matter waves, we talk about the E as the electric vector and H as the magnetic vector, which describes the behavior of waves. Whereas in case of quantum mechanics, we explain the behavior of waves in the form of wave function psi. The value of wave function associated with the moving body at a particular point x, y, z in space and time v is related to the likelihood of finding the body at the, the time. Now when I say what is psi, psi is the quantum mechanical wave function which describes the existence of particle which describes the presence of that particle for a particular time and a particular position. But whenever we try to understand this wave function, the first line written in each and every book, there is no physical significance of the wave function psi. But if I go for psi square, psi square which is a into a star that gives a square plus b 
this one. That means size and complex quantity, it doesn't have any physical significance. But when I go for the size square, which is the size I star of square of magnitude of the size, it gives the probability density. And if I say the probability of finding of any particle in this given say 0.5, it means that it, there must be a 50% possibility. So size doesn't have the wave function, or oh, sorry, size doesn't have the physical significance, but size square is having physical significance and it explains the existence of particle in the given region which is known as probability density. The probability of exponential finding the body described by the wave function psi at the point x, y, z at time t is proportional to the value of psi square direct t. That we will discuss later in the time. Now, how fast the probability is We will not go for detailed understanding of this, but as we started with the dual nature that the matter exists in the dual form now, if it exists in the dual form, then how we can explain the behavior of particle waves which are given for the, any electron or any micro particle. Now when we say the wavelength lambda is given by the h by p, where p is the momentum. When I write lambda is equal to h by p, where p is momentum, it means I write m into v. So remember v is the velocity of the particle and we are trying to understand the velocity of the waves formed for the metal particle. It's very easy to solve it. V P is equal to two lambda. If I just solve the Einstein's equation, I change the value of times square. I pull the value of times square. New from here to this equation, and we will get the very surprising result. The result shows that the thing will get base velocity. What is the base velocity? The wave velocity of <coughs> matter waves. Now, when I say wave velocity of matter waves, then it comes c square by v. Quite surprising that the wave is traveling with the speed v, which is me equal or less than the velocity of light are moving with the speed which is greater than the speed of light. And here the problem comes for the de Broglie. He is unable to explain how the matter waves are traveling with the speed which is greater than the speed of light. Since the particle velocity v must be less than the velocity of light, see, de Broglie is always traveling faster than light which is not possible. To understand the above unexpected result, we must understand the concept of phase and velocity. So from here, we can conclude that the de Broglie is unable to explain that how the matter waves are traveling. Because according to him, the matter waves are traveling with a speed which is known as phase velocity and which is greater than the velocity of light. Now, so when we talk about the understanding of the group and phase velocity and particle velocity. So here we will have three terms V, Vp and Vg. This Vp represents phase velocity which we discussed in the last part. V is the velocity of the particle and Vg is the group velocity. Now what is the meaning of group velocity? When two waves of almost same frequency and same wave number are traveling together then they will superimpose and they will form a wave packet which is just like this one. This is the wave group or known as the wave packet. If you look over here, the complete packet is having the very frequency as well as amplitude. So in this case, we are unable to find out the exact wavelength, but here we can calculate the average wavelength of this wave packet. Now, this is how wave packet formation can be explained. These two waves are having almost the same frequency, say first one is omega. Then second one is omega plus del omega and the first one is k remember that it is k plus del k. When these two superimpose, they form a wave packet like this. But mathematically, this can be explained by the simple calculation. Say y1 is the first wave is represented by this equation and second one by this. When these two superimposes, we will get a new equation which is 2a cos del omega by 2t minus del k by 2x into cos omega t minus x. This is the parental equation which we started by was is equal to a cos omega t minus kx. It means due to the superposition of two waves, the parental wave remains as it is whereas we got a new amplitude which is earlier a in both the cases y1 and y2. Just to go here. The y1 is equal to, I mean, a amplitude, y2 is also a amplitude, but when these two simple males, 
In that case, we will get the change to amplitude and this amplitude 2a into cos del omega by 2 t minus del k by 2 into x gives the complete amplitude of the wave packet which is formed by the superimposition of two or more waves. Now, when we talk about <coughs> group formation or group velocity or particle velocity, the velocity which is the center of wave omega and k group, the maximum amplitude moves is called group velocity of the wave group. If you look on the diagram, This is the maximum amplitude. So, what we assume that the maximum amplitude, its velocity becomes minimum. So, that can be explained by this. The amplitude will be maximum when del omega by 2t minus del k by 2x is equal to 0. The reason we have this force 0 is a maximum value of 1. So, the angle part of the amplitude is taken as 0. When we differentiate it, I'll get del omega by 2 dt minus del k by 2 dx is equal to 0. And if you on rearranging the terms, I get Pc is equal to dx by dt d omega by dk. This is known as group velocity. The velocity of the whole wave packet, the velocity of whole wave group. The second one is the phase velocity, is the velocity of the maximum of individual wave. Cos omega t minus kx represents the individual wave. So, in that case, we will get the maximum amplitude of the individual wave. In that case, the phase velocity is written as omega t minus kx is equal to 0 and here we will obtain vt is equal to omega by t which is, sorry, omega by k which is the phase velocity whereas this is the group velocity. So ultimately we got the three equations. The first one is the wave velocity v, sorry, the particle velocity v. The second one is the phase velocity of the velocity of metal waves and the third one is the group velocity. Now, we we'll just try to find out the relation of group velocity in terms of the phase velocity and particle velocity. Vg is taken as d omega by dk and on real injector terms we get Vg is equal to v. Which is a <coughs> quite surprising result. Earlier we obtained that in case of uh, metal waves, the waves or the phase velocity is greater than the wave velocity whereas here the group velocity comes as the wave of the particle and uh, velocity of the particle. So, in this case, if we substitute the value, Vp is equal to c square by v, which is absolutely wrong, and we can conclude that in case of particle or the metal waves, the velocity of group is equal to the particle velocity. It means we simply say the velocity of particle is same with the velocity of the metal waves, and there is no result, there is no conclusive part where we get the Vp is greater than c square by v. Now, the another topic of the problem is there is we are able to explain through any experimental evidence of the de Broglie hypothesis where we say lambda is equal to x by v. The first experimental evidence of the de Broglie hypothesis is given by the Davison Thermal experiment. It is a simple experiment just like the content effect where <coughs> We try to explain the existence of dual nature. Yes, this is the experimental setup of the Davison Thermal experiment. Here is the filament where the electrons are scattered on the filament and this is the electron beam, this is the nickel crystal where electron is hitting on the surface of the nickel and this is the reason where the detector is placed and we try to observe the scattered electron through this experiment. Now the maximum electrons are scattered through an angle of 50 degree. So we try to understand the scattering of the electron through nickel crystal and application of the de Broglie's theory or de Broglie's hypothesis for the same. Now, are the de Broglie waves responsible for this finding of the and Germain? The first one, we assume that the 
The legal crystal is a crystalline form. It means it must follow a Bragg's equation to and lambda is equal to 2d sin theta. Whereas lambda is the wavelength of incident radiations, d is the interplanar spacing, and theta is the angular scattering. Now, when we substitute the value of s 50 degree and d as an interplanar spacing for n is equal to 1, we obtain lambda is equal to 0.165 nanometer. So, according to Davison Zerbal experiment, the first wavelength which he observed to the experiment is 0.165 nanometer by a simple assumption of the by a simple assumption of the interplanar spacing that nickel crystal or nickel is a crystalline structure and it gives diffraction through the Brex condition. Now second one again he assumed that the if the crystalline structure may behave as a reflecting grating. In that case, he used another formula d is equal to d sin phi is equal to n lambda. Again, n is equal to 1, d is the interplanar spacing or interatomic separation, and phi is equal to 50 degree. By substituting values, we got lambda is equal to again 165 nanometer. And at last, he used very simple concept of the Dirac hypothesis that lambda is equal to h by p, where p is the momentum which may be written as 2mk, k is the kinetic energy, or kinetic energy is written as e into v, a is the <coughs> charge of an electron, and b is the ejection potential or starting potential of the material. And when we substitute all the values, we got the 0.166 nanometer. Now, when we look on the three theories, the value of the wavelength which obtained the three different aspects of the Davison Zerman is absolutely the same 0 0.165, 0 0.165, and 0 0.166 nanometer. It shows that the experimental result of Davison Zerman are matching with the theoretical concept of the DBOP, and this gives the confirmation about the existence of dual nature of matter. This is all about today's lecture and the origin of the quantum mechanics with the dual nature hypothesis. Thank you.